what's in store for you today, and we are so excited. My question is, how are you feeling out there? Show us with your body. Get inside the chat box. We've got Facebook, YouTube, Zoom. How are you feeling? My name is Carissa Kuchis, and I will be your MC for the day today. I'm here basically to help you get the most out of this virtual event, especially if this is your very first time tuning in to an incredible experience like this. You know, some of you, and let us know in the chat box right now which category you fall in. Some of you maybe have connected with Matthew throughout the years through the movies or maybe in the book Green Lights. And some of you maybe just landed at an event like this for the very first time. You saw an ad, you got invited by a friend, and you're like, holy smokes, how the heck did I even get here? And now you're a couple minutes away from hanging out with Matthew freaking Mah McConaughey. Is that not the craziest thing? So. I've got a couple housekeeping items to help support you having the most incredible virtual event you can possibly have. Number one, as you can see, we are in an interactive virtual studio. This is your very first time tuning in to an interactive training event of this capacity. I want you to throw in the chat box first time. You know, what's different about today, it's not just like watching a Matthew McConaughey movie kicking back with some popcorn. This is actually deeply interactive. So if you're a VIP, give me a wave right now. You're actually on a Zoom call with Matthew McConaughey hate today how nuts is that and go ahead and put your cameras on okay this is a camera on experience and then lean and I got to tell you something please remember your camera is on okay wink wink um, for everybody else whether you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube or zoom one of the most important ways that you're going to communicate today with Matthew McConaughey and all of the incredible speakers that hit this stage is inside of your chat box so if you know where your chat box is, put a finger on the nose, VIPs. If you're on Facebook or you are on YouTube, I'd like you to locate that, that chat box today. And everyone lift your hands up like this and give me a big old wave, okay? Lay your hands on the keyboard and then leave them there today because that's how you're going to interact and pitch and catch and hang out with Matthew McConaughey and all of our other speakers. They actually want to hear from you. They want to connect with you. They want you to share your interpretation of today and connect with other people, create community, and get the most out of this event. So. Let's do a test run on YouTube, on Facebook, on Zoom right now. I want you to type in the chat box. All right, all right, all right. We should see all these chats rolling, and they should never stop rolling the entire day today. Let's really create some beautiful energy, okay? Our second tip for you in this beautiful virtual studio, this, this experience, is dedicate the time. Matthew, the team, has planned out literally every single detail of this day all the way to the very last second. So how many of you are committed to staying all the way until the end today, not missing a minute of this beautiful action? I always like to say to miss a minute is to miss way too much, but plus we have some amazing speakers. You're gonna hear from people like Dean Graziosi, Marie Forleo, Trent Shelton, and we even have the incredible and the amazing Mr. Tony Robbins joining us at the end of the day today. So you're in for a treat. It's going to blow your mind and heart. I got to sit in and, and be a part of the prep the last two days. And what you're about to experience is going to lead you to a, a land of more, more love, more passion, more joy, more spunk, whatever it is you're here for. This is the, the avenue where you get to create it. The third tip for you, and then we're going to get this party started. If you're ready for the third tip, say, oh, baby, yes, in that chat box and make some noise. The third tip for you is energy. You know, I've hosted my fair share of events over the last half decade, and I'll tell you that the difference that makes the difference is how you show up and I show up and all of us show up as a community. By the way, is this a community here today? A group of us here to master the art of living. We're starting as strangers, but what's uniting us is that we all want more in some capacity. And so we get to show up and give more to this experience. So check in with yourself right now. Are you sitting back like passively in your chair? Do you have like a million tabs open on your computer? Do you have just one earbud in? Or are you completely and totally engaged? Are you leaned in? Do you have a smile on your face for God's sakes? Are you ready to experience more is essentially the basis of this question. Yes, my friends, if you want more, it's going to be highly advantageous to give more of yourself to this day. So that is it. If you are ready, make some noise. Let's just shake the body out. Shake off the day. Shake off the weekend. Stretch it up to the ceiling. Lean over. Come on. Shake that, shake that day off. 
Um, and, and it's time to get this party started. I'm so deeply excited to bring to the stage a man that's going to introduce Matthew McConaughey to you all. And it's the man that's really responsible for helping make an event of this magnitude possible. There's over 2 million of you guys from 155,000 different countries. And he's going to share the really cool backstory of how Matthew McConaughey is even hosting an event like this, bringing his message to all of you. And this man is one of the greatest innovators and creative geniuses of all time. And his name is Dean Graziosi. And I know some of you in the audience already know Dean. And if not, you're going to fall in love with him. But this man is responsible for helping thought leaders just like Matthew reach the world through their message at a scale beyond what any other human has done. And some of the biggest events you've probably seen online in this category, self-growth, self-exploration, self-development, were actually orchestrated by Dean, and he's the brain behind the Art of Living, this event here today in partnership with Matthew. And sure, he's wrote New York Times bestselling books. He's been a part of building a ton of companies. He's cre created incredible amounts of success, but his claim to fame is three things. Number one, he's an amazing husband. He's an incredible father. And he's most importantly, a man on a mission to help important messages, like what we're going to learn today, reach people around the world like us. Dean, Matthew, together, they've been working for months to bring this project to life. And today, I'm so excited you finally get to experience the magic that is the art of living. Are you ready, my friends? Please help me welcome to the stage to kick this beautiful day off. It's Dean Graziosi! McConaughey will be on in just a few minutes. I just want to jump in. For those I'm meeting for the first time, hello. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege to be here. For those that I see, we know each other. What's up? Hey, uh, I wanted to give a little context, a little behind the scenes on, on how an event like this happens. Why, why did Matthew McConaughey do the art of living? I figured I'd pull back the curtain here in just a couple minutes. You know, about a year ago, who in here has red green lights? Anybody red green lights? Yeah, and if you didn't, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about here in just a few minutes. But I got done reading Green Lights about a year ago. And when I got done, I wanted more. I wanted more McConaughey. I wanted more what he was delivering. I've been in this industry helping serve people for over 27 years, and it was so different. I could feel his heart speaking to mine, but not just as the actor, as someone giving you a better path. So I immediately called my dear friend, one of my best friends in the world, and my partner, Tony Robbins. I'm like you got to read McConaughey's book. I'm telling you. So about a week later, I called him. I said, hey, did you read that book? He's like, not yet. I'm like, read the damn thing. So two days later, my phone rings. I see it's Tony, and I pick it up. And the words he says is, this bastard's crazier than me. And he said, when he got done with being funny, he said, honest and truly, this guy's depth of wisdom is unlike anything I've ever seen. And the way he delivers it, it kind of sticks to the ribs. I said, I know the world needs more McConaughey. So we invited him to speak at a couple of our events. And they were our biggest events. We had over 2 million people over two events. And people went nuts. They went absolutely crazy. Not one of the greatest actors of our time. But they didn't go crazy for the actor. They went crazy because of how he delivered in a time when we all need it. Can we all agree the last couple of years have been pretty damn crazy? Right? And, and can we all agree? Can we all agree we all got stuff? We all got past stuff. We all got things we're fighting through. We all got things. And then you compound it with the craziness the last couple of years. And so many people, I've been in the Facebook group, so many people are lost looking for that next level, looking for a path, looking for a plan. And this guy gives us a better perspective, like a different set of lenses to look through. And that's why we are so excited to help bring this event to reality, to bring this event to you guys today. Because who's ready for another level? Right? And, and here's what I know. I've been doing this a long time, 27 years. My partner, Tony, for 45 years. But here's what I do know, is we might come from different backgrounds, different countries, 150 countries, not 150,000, but KK was in the mix, right? Um, we all come from different, maybe different religions, different politics, but there's one thing we all have in common. We all know we were meant for more. More love, more joy, more abundance, more happiness, more freedom, more income, more impact on the world. So who can admit we are meant for more? And that unites us today, right? 
And the other thing is we have this opportunity to look into a better future for ourselves. And the reason I believe McConaughey is so good, the guy's been journaling for over 30 years. So when you journal, you get to see patterns. This pattern helps me be successful. This pattern helps me go in a different direction, right? And he loves to say, you know, I'm not making A's and stri straight A's and everything. But think about this. I got to see behind the scenes, behind the curtain, an amazing relationship with his wife. And it's unbelievable. I got to see behind the curtain of the father that he is, the work he does. He is a hustler. The work he put in to make this event live is unbelievable. Hey, 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 I'm trying to focus over here. Can we, give can we, a like, background. like I'm trying to do an opening here. Let's give me a little background. <laughs> can we travel everywhere? I love this stuff. <laughs> Obviously, he'll be here in two seconds. I want to end with this. You have no idea the work that went into this and creating something for you to tap into that full potential, to live into the person you're meant to be. So can we commit to staying all day? Can we commit to going all in? Can you put it in the chat? I commit or I'm all in, McConaughey. green lights I was I was bombarded with the request to go deeper into the approach and reveal some process and that serendipitously is when Tony and Dean called saying hey, hey McConaughey we love your book we want to go deeper and get even more practical with it I said uh yes <laughs> and here we are after eight months of creating this project this one live Right here, right now, with you. We have all intentions today of supplying what you demand. Dean and Tony, your ability and desire to influence so many people in such unanimously positive ways is truly inspiring. Uh, and, and the fact that you're out to do more than just inspire, you know, you're actually here to transform. Amen to that. Thank you for giving me that call. <laughs> So thank you, Dean. Thank you, Tony. Also Marie, Trent, Carissa, and, and so many other talented folks behind the scenes, all right, for choosing to make the time and do such specific and high-end work that we finally get to share with you today. All right, now, here's the biggie, man. Thank you. All of you. Over two million of you? You had a choice. You ain't got to be here. You be doing whatever you do every other Monday or any other time, but you're not. You're here. You made the time. You chose to take the risk, and you showed up. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for not being lazy with yourself. Right. Thank you for, for, for being humble. Thank you for being curious. Thank you for being willing to learn. Thank you for being so generous with yourself, for being honest and brave enough to interrogate and investigate yourself. Because we all know it's a whole hell of a lot easier not to. <laughs> Thank you also for not being afraid of change and admitting that you want and you need more. Thanks for being courageous enough to find out what the heck your more is and take the journey to get it. Basically, I'm saying thank you for investing in yourself. So
So, what am I doing here? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing here, you, me, us, together right now? Now, I, I think we're all trying to figure out the riddle. You know, put, put some rhyme to the reason and answer the bigger existential question of what the hell are we doing here in this life that we're living? <laughs> in this life that sometimes we feel like we're not living at all. And I get it. I get it, man. We, we, we live in such uncertain times. We are constantly searching for answers. Constantly searching for our sanity even. We're just looking for some solid ground to step on. It's damn hard to find. We're not quite sure how to move forward, much less where we'd be going when we do. Yes, the future, it's foggy. And it seems like on this highway called life, everybody's got their hazard lights on. We're asking the question, is this all there is? Is this just... <laughs> How's it got to be? We don't know who to trust. We don't know what to believe in. So what do we do? We find ourselves chasing every single fad that the world tells us we should chase. And none of them seem to get us where we want to go. No. They just have us going in circles. Revolving. Getting dizzy. Instead of evolving. And you know what the... I'm sorry... And congratulations at the same time fact of our situation is no one's coming to save us. <laughs> That's the first thing we got to admit. No, that, that, that genie in a bottle is still just a genie. That lottery ticket probably ain't going to hit the jackpot. And those goals and dreams that we have ain't going to reach themselves on their own. And that's why right now is the time to adapt, to evolve, to take inventory. That's why right now is the time to renegotiate who we are, how we treat each other. That's why right now is the time to re-engineer how we can get to where we want and need to go. That's why right now is the time to restore what's worth keeping from our past and what's worth taking into our future. It is time to not just find solid ground. It's time to admit that the solid ground that we seek is also higher ground. A place where we can truly have more Value, choice, balance, joy, love, health, security, freedom, divinity. Where we can get more out of our life, our relationships, our careers, ourselves. So let me answer that question that I asked earlier. How the hell did I get here today with you? And what's my goal? As I said, after my book Green Lights was published, and people asked me to dive deeper into the process, they asked me questions like, McConaughey, will you tell me more about that methodology to determine whether a light in my life is green, yellow, or red. I want to hear more on that. They asked me questions like, how do I know if I can trust a green light? How do I know if a green light is just a battery-powered flash in the pan or some timeless solar-powered green light that I can rely on leading me home? They asked me, how do I know what choice to make at the yellow lights in my life? When do I heed caution and slow down because I need to? And when do I put the pedal to the metal and blow through that damn thing? They asked me about those red lights. He said, how do I trust and believe that there's actually a gift for me in every red light that stops me in my tracks? 
They also asked me, what do you mean by the art of living? Well, I needed to ponder those questions. So, alone, I went to my favorite office. I buckled up in my favorite seat, and I started crossing the highways and byways of North America. Yes, I took a road trip. <laughs> now, I know that there's a science to satisfaction. It's reached by making consistent and measurable choices, ones that we can each and all make to actually engineer more satisfaction, more green lights in our life. But I believe there's an art to living. You see, the science, that's the notes. The art, that's the music. The art, that's the dream. The science is the doing of the deed to reach that dream. The science leads to the art. We follow the science, we create the art. We study the playbook, then we can call the audibles. We use the right tools. We can not just build the house, we can build a home. That would be the art of living. So what did I learn on this road trip I took? What answers did I find and receive? Well, first answer was very clear. There is no one answer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the knowledge and wisdom in the art of living is ultimately up to each of us individually. All right, you know, my appetite may be your indigestion. Uh, your appetite may make my stomach queasy. We want different things in different amounts at different times in our life. That's not to say that there was no rhyme to the reason. No. There is a very consistent rhythm, actually, for all of us in the art of living. It's a rhythm of consistently asking ourselves the right questions. Questions that, if we continue to ask ourselves with complete honesty, will reliably get us closer to what we want and need and inform us as to how to get where we truly want and need to go. Questions that will allow us to adapt, evolve, and chart a course on life's highway that does lead us to the ultimate destination, a life we love. A life that we are honored to be living. A past that we're proud of. And a future that we look forward to. That, my friends, is what we're going to do today. No, we are not going to find all the answers. But to get started, we are going to start asking the right questions. Amen? is to expose the gap between the man or the woman that you want to be and the man or the woman that you are. And then show you the way to close that gap through simple actions, choice-making paradigms, and daily habits that you can align with your compass so you can feed your appetite. Follow the science. You will find the art. Rule of the road here. I need everyone to remember, this is an open conversation. We are here to admit, not judge. All right? So while we have everyone gathered around the table, over two million of us, I must say, yes, two million of us united in our quest for more. So know that you are not alone on this journey. Together, we're going to start to peel back the layers, all right? We're going to start admitting the lies so to reveal the true you. I'm telling you, watch what happens. Watch what happens when you start doing that. It's going to start to clear the lane between your head and your heart. And that's going to start to revive your connection to the person you want, need, and are meant to be. Watch it. Yes. 
Getting to the art of living starts with admitting. Yes, we want to be legit. We got to first admit. Yes, I just rhymed again. Guilty. I do that all the time. Can't help myself. All right, everybody ready? Ready to clean house? Ready to start admitting? All right? Buckle up. Hmm. First thing we're gonna do, name, claim, and declare. Yes, it is time for you to admit why you are here. I know, already that arrogant self-judgment is probably starting to sneak in on some of you, but hey, kick it out. Again, this is a free speech zone and there is no gavel in this court today. Speak, think, and write freely. Raise your hand and say, yes, I, because today we are both guilty and approved at the same time. Name it, claim it, and declare it. Write it down. Put it in the chat. Why are you here? Here we go. Coming into the chat. Thank you. Keep them coming, baby. Woo! Me. Uh, well, why am I here? I'm here because I admit that I'm still not living up to the man that I, I want and need to be. I admit that I know that I'm not yet the person that I got the capacity to be. I admit that sometimes I don't believe in myself enough. And I admit that I still have a whole lot more to learn and that I need more courage to be more honest with myself. I also admit that I'm here because I am not making straight A's and everything that I'm preaching about. <laughs> All right. And, and stuff that I've already learned. I'm still not living up to, but I'm going to keep working on it. That's why I'm here. So your turn. Why are you here? Again, no, no judgment, no shame or blame. Just admit it. Can you admit maybe something that you've been lying to yourself? about? Can you admit where maybe you're coming up short? Can you admit where maybe you need to improve your, your, your aim? Can you admit what maybe you need to double down on in your life to have more? Can you admit to what maybe you need less of, less of in your life to have more? Why are you here? Admit it. Write it down. Put it in the chat. Get it out.
to keep stepping. I want to keep growing. I want to be a better mom. I don't believe what I know. I want passion and purpose. I want to love myself. I want to escape the corporate rat race. I need some more forgiveness. I need some more resilience. I want to do more. I want to find genuine happiness. Believe in myself and my future. I want to be all of me. I want to feel more. I want to wake up. To love in my life. next section on right there what we recognize what we give credit to is being a reality sometimes when it's not number two let's talk about illusion me I, I, I gotta admit again uh, sometimes Reality, it's not enough for me. I feel like I need more than reality to, to, to get off to sometimes. I have unrealistic expectations of others and the world around me a lot of times. And because and when they don't live up to my expectations, I start chasing a, a false existence. All right? And before I know it, I start chasing a false utopia, one that doesn't even exist. And before I know it, I'm living on an illusion and I'm missing out on reality, this life. So look, I'm all for the notion that, hey, if you ain't impressed with your reality, then create a reality that you're impressed with. Yay. I'm all for having dreams and in the spirit of shooting for the stars. But not at the exclusion of missing out on the reality of the day. How about you? Are you still looking for a perfect mate or a partner that you think is going to fix all your problems, but you hadn't really done the work to fix your own? illusion is your self-worth maybe based on how many likes you got on your Instagram from strangers who you don't even know illusion you want to do a best-selling book but you hadn't even written first words yet illusion you want to solve world hunger, but you haven't fed one person yet. Illusion. You want the million dollar business, but you won't quit the nine to five job that you hate to make it happen. 
illusion. Or you want the million dollar business, but won't take that nine to five job that you need as the first step to get there. Also, illusion. So let's admit it. Let's admit where we maybe don't have appropriate expectations on a day to day basis of the world and of ourselves. Let's admit that maybe we're missing out on the truths, the beauties, and the tools of the day that are right in front of us. And let's admit that those very truths, beauties, and tools, those are what we are going to need to build that rocket ship to get us to those stars that we're shooting for, the ones we're trying to reach. That is not an illusion. That is reality. Admit it. Number three. False sense of identity. Are you only hanging out with people that never challenge you? That always agree with you, your beliefs, your politics? You know, the enablers. Those people who make you feel safe, but maybe keep you small. Speaking of politics, can we, can, can we just admit <laughs> how often we say to ourselves, I don't need to be self-reliant and make up my own mind if the people I agree with are in power. Because, hey, they're going to take care of me and my kind. What happens when we do that? We, we, we run to our echo chambers, we, we huddle up, we get tribal, we start saying, me and my tribe, uh, we, we, we don't really know what we're about or what we're for, we, uh, we just know that we're against whatever, whatever they're for. Come on, it's not identity, there's no vision or way forward in that thinking, that's just some passive aggressive counterpunch default bullshit. Guilty. I know. I said no judging. My bogey. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> ah. At the same time, let's also admit, it's hard to be open to other perspectives and opinions that may not be just like our own. I get it. Because it feels like if we are open to them, if we do consider another point of view, feels like we might end up compromising our own. And that's fair. Let's admit that too. But at the same time, let's also admit that it might truly serve us well if we at least try and put ourselves in other people's shoes. And when we, when we do, that it doesn't mean we have to quit wearing our shoes. It just means that we can maybe learn more, understand more. And that doesn't give us less identity. It gives us more. Admit it. You check this chat. Whoo, we got to say, man, strength and diversity. Jeez, learning. Everyone has opinions. I don't have to agree with them. And that's okay. We can still converse. Respect is a mutual thing. Yes. Celebrate differences. Empathy. We can learn, change, and grow from every experience. We got to be humble. Yes. You know the best definition of humble I ever heard? Humble. Admitting that we have more to learn. Oh, love that definition. Humility. That's the kind of humble we're talking about. Need more compassion. Perspective does make us richer. Walk in other people's shoes, amen. Let's all keep learning. Be open to new ideas. Everybody does want to be heard and valued. Don't stop. Number four. Going off a of don't stop. Let's talk about uh, 
complacency. Can we admit all the times we say, oh, well, that's just, that's just what it is, so I'm going to go with it. Can we admit where and when that, that, that we're not ambitious enough? Admit those times that we hesitated to actually find out. Times we didn't give ourselves enough credit for our ability. Times we put a self-made ceiling over our head when we didn't really have a right to do so. Can we admit when and where we blamed others for not getting the success that we wanted? Yeah. Politicians, government, economy, banks, or boss. Admit it. Number five. Oh, I love this one. Our greatest strengths can also be our greatest weaknesses. <laughs> this one just came to me like six months ago. I don't know why it took 52 and a half years to figure it out, but sure. <laughs> Do you ever notice how your greatest assets and strengths can also be your, your greatest Achilles heel? All right, me. All right, um, one of my greatest strengths happens to be resilience. Now, I fall down. I, 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 I get up and, and dust myself off like that. I step in a pile of shit. I, I keep running while I'm cleaning that shit off my shoe on the go. All right? But that can turn into one of my biggest downfalls. Being a repeat offender. <laughs> See what I mean? I I'll step in the same pile of shit every time around the bend because I never stopped to take inventory of just where that pile of shit that I keep stepping in was. And if I did that, I'd be able to dodge it next time around the bend. I don't do that. I keep running. Hang the shit off. <laughs> Stepping it again on the next way around. You see, I rely on resilience. One of my greatest strengths. So much sometimes that I'm too busy dusting myself off, too busy running again with the same shit on my shoe, that I never take the time to look back and ask, why do I keep stepping in that same pile of shit. Our resilience is great, but not at the expense of a little wisdom and discernment and a shoe that stinks less. Another strength of mine is preparation. I love to prepare. It has led to so much of my success, but it can also become my Achilles heel. How? Because I love preparation so much. If you give me enough time, I will prepare until the day I die and still think that I could use more time. I mean, sometimes I have to tell myself, Makai, declare, boy. Get in the ring, son. Ding, ding. It is game time. Ready or not, here I come. Enough prep, enough studying. It is time to start doing. Go. I ask you, what can you admit that might be one of your greatest strengths, that when you rely on it too much, actually becomes your Achilles heel. Write it down. Put it in the chat. Admit it. Procrastination. Overthinking. I like to think a lot. Oh, I'm too organized. Too proud. My honor turns to pride. Oh, I like to take my time, but I can sometimes get lazy. My patience. Sometimes I'll wait around too long for things to happen. Oh, I love pleasing people. Sometimes I please them at the expense of pleasing myself, taking care of myself.
Sometimes I think of others so much that I don't love myself enough. I love to talk. <laughs> Sometimes I talk too much. <laughs> Sometimes I talk so much I don't listen. Taking care of everyone else. Resentment builds up. Oh, the belief that no one can do it as good as me. There you go, Ellen. Been too strong. I got nothing left. Too busy saving the world and not me. Oh, I think I'm always right. No one truly hears my voice. I'm relaxed, but I get too relaxed. I get tired. Okay. Thank you for the chats. Keep them coming. This is a live discussion we're having. I'm loving this. I've never done it before. This is on point. Thank you. Number six. White. Lies. What? Lies. Oh, oh, no, no. Remember that song? <laughs> Some of you youngsters out there are going, what the hell's he humming? My, everyone else there, y'all go, I remember that too. Yeah. Question. Or fact, I think. We all tell white lies. To ourselves and to each other. Uh, my dad told me a good white lie when I was a kid. It was around 1980. So I was, I think, uh, around 11 years old. I was living with my dad in a trailer park. My mom, she wasn't there. She was on an extended vacation in Florida, my dad told me. Well, I found out 20 years later that in 1985, my mom and dad, they were actually in the middle of their second divorce. See, my mom wasn't on an extended vacation in Florida. Now, if my dad had, had, had told me the truth that they were divorced, man, I think I'd have had so many questions. I'd have been so confused. I, I wouldn't have understood it. So I asked myself, do I blame my dad now for not telling me the truth, Tell me that white light then? And the answer is no. Because he did it for my preservation. He thought it was best for me not to know. I gotta say, I think he was right. And besides, they got remarried for the third and final time anyway. <laughs> it's a true story. Look, what I'm saying is white lies sometimes are necessary to tell. But what we got to watch is the slippery slope of letting the little white lies become the bigger lies. You know what I mean? Too many big lies. We don't know our own truth from our own fiction. And before we know it, we look around. And we're living a lie. We find ourselves lying for a short-term convenience. But we do it so often that the lies, they, they start to accrue. And instead of the lies creating convenience, they end up not being convenient at all. They actually end up causing us stress from, one, trying to remember who we told what and when. And two, we, we find ourselves in between the rock and a hard place of trying to lie our way into defending lies that we already told in the past. We all been there. <laughs> Those lies, they leave crumbs in our past. Crumbs that we are eventually going to have to sweep up. And in the long run, that sucks for all of us. So I, I ask you, any white lies you've been telling? That maybe you've been letting slip into some bigger lies. <laughs> ones that you might be telling others. Or ones that you might be telling yourself. 
Guilty. Admit it. What do we got over here, chat? Bet I'm fine. Bet lies are okay. Bet I'm not depressed. That I can afford this. That I'm not good enough. That I'm disciplined when I'm not. <laughs> that the keto and dark chocolate are good for me. <laughs> That my dreams will be given to me. That I don't miss my home. That I'm not an addict. Okay. Thank you. Keep them coming. Oh, yeah. That I don't need anyone. That I did my best. That I lie to keep loving my life. That I'm drinking as much as I am. I can do it all, that I'm trying as hard as I can. Beautiful. Keep them coming, please. This is live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to get on to number seven with you. It's called imposter syndrome. All right. Let's admit that our confidence is fickle. <laughs> Take me, for example. And I, I need achievement, confidence, a sense of significance. I don't achieve, and I start to feel very insignificant. I feel less confident. Seriously, ask my wife. I go 48 hours without achieving something, I start to feel unworthy. I forget to remind myself, like, hey, McConaughey, what about the last 53 years of your life? Look around, look back. You want to give yourself some credit for that? And I forget to. As much as we say we enjoy the process, so often we panic if we don't have constant achievement. So we're always perpetually in lack of achievement. And, and here's the thing, it never ends. Whether you are a rookie just getting started or you just had a big successful breakthrough, let me tell you a story. It's 1996. Movie I made, A Time to Kill. Anybody remember that? Well, it opened up on the weekend, a very successful box office and critical applause. And within 72 hours, that opening weekend, I suddenly became famous, a, a movie star. And I could green light movies in Hollywood. Everybody seemed to love me, and they even told me so out loud. Things that I had talked about before that nobody listened to. Now, not only were they listening to, but they were putting it in big, bold print. I, I was on the cover of a lot of magazines. Next to my face on the cover of GQ magazine, it even said, Matthew McConaughey saves the movies. Well, I didn't know the movies needed saving, but all right. I was on top of the world, right? Eh. Negatory? No. See that, 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 that overnight tidal wave of applause and affluence had understandably thrown me off balance. Ironically, my confidence was very fickle. Why? Because I was confused, man. I had a hell of a lot more questions than I did answers. Certain? I was not. You see, I didn't feel like I had earned the sudden success, the attention, the affection, the overnight fame. And I started to feel guilty about it. Why me? Can you see, do I deserve this? What's, what's real? What's not real? So... I did what, in hindsight, I now know was a very smart thing. 
I got the hell out of Dodge. I left Hollywood, and I went to a monastery in New Mexico whose invitation was, if you can make the 13-mile hike down the washed-out dirt road off Highway 11 to get here, pull the rope, ring the bell, and we'll find you a place to sleep. So I had a friend drop me off on the side of that highway. I made the 13-mile pilgrimage. I pulled the rope, rang the bell, and a monk named Brother Aldrew answered the door. He welcomed me in. He said, why do you come here, brother? I said, brother, I got a lot of things on my mind, man. I, I, I need to talk to somebody. I need to, I need to confess. He listened to me and then said, brother, I know just the right person for you to talk to. His name is Brother Christian. He'll meet you in the morning at sunrise. The next morning, Brother Christian met me at sunrise. He said, do you want to go for a walk, brother? So we did. Now on this walk, I began to purge. I confessed where and what I felt were sins of my mind, sins of my flesh, sins of my deeds. Newfound indulgences that are making me feel gross. Some of them make me feel like I just hadn't really earned them or deserved them. Or maybe I didn't even want them. I went on and on and on with my confession. Brother Christian, patiently listening as he walked beside me, hands behind his back. Never saying a word. He never said one word. Four and a half hours later, me purging, confessing, him not saying a word, we circled back to the chapel where we sat on a bench. Me, I'm sitting there and tears are running down my face. And I got snot running out of my nose and I'm sitting there coming out of this purge and I finally wrap up my four and a half hour confessional rap sheet. Brother Christian has still not said one word. But now I'm finally done. Heads down, I'm wiping tears from my eyes and I'm awaiting his judgment. He says nothing. 20 seconds go by. He says nothing. 30 seconds go by. He says nothing. A minute goes by. It's silent. Nothing. Finally, I looked up at him. And I see Brother Christian just staring at me. We just held each other's gaze, just looked at each other's eyes for about 10 seconds. And the clock was ticking in my mind like I was just waiting on his condemnation. That's when he, he leaned slightly towards me. He whispered, Me too. Ah, ah, thank you. I laid out on the ground, man. Tears all came back, but this time they were tears of relief, forgiveness, joy. You see, that, that, those two words, Me too. Those two words, Brother Christian didn't, 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 didn't. He let me know that I didn't have a singular, self-centered, independently original, one and only, one-of-a-kind problem. No, I had a, a human condition. With, the, with those two words, Brother Christian invited me back to the human race. And it took so much pressure off of me. Like I said, I, finally I was able to forgive myself. I was also able to name and claim what I was going to change about myself. I was able to, 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 to see more clearly the truth from the bullshit and all the opulent options of my newfound fame. Me too. Those two words let me off the hook and allow me to handle my business, to take ownership of my place within the human condition. Thank you, Brother Christian. So 
I want to ask you. Can you admit something in your life that you don't feel like you deserve or have earned? Can you admit a goal or a dream that you want to chase, but you're feeling like, nah, I can't fly that high. I'm not, I'm not equipped. I don't, I don't really have the ability. I'm not qualified. Can you admit something in your life that guilt is keeping you from getting? Can you admit something that you don't want to start, continue, or finish because you're afraid to? Say it aloud to yourself. Write it down. Confess. Admit it. The boogeyman. Dum, 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 dum. The unknown. The darkness. Your fears, your flaws, your future. Now, why and when and how do we get so convinced that anything in the dark, anything unseen or under the bed is bad? Something to fear. Something that can hold us back. Something that if we face it, if we dare to face it, will defeat us. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't seem like we shake those damn nursery rhymes as easy as we like to think we do, do we? <laughs> I think we learned all that stuff young. And I get it. There is plenty to fear in life. But let's admit, most of the time, when we get the courage to confront that which we fear, we usually find out that there wasn't much to fear at all. That, that fear was mostly just in our head. There was no boogeyman under the bed. Now, it was the boogeyman until we had a look. Stepped into the unknown, the, the darkness, and confronted our fears. See, sometimes that means facing our fears and flaws and admitting that we are not perfect. And when we do that, we quit turning our dreams into these damn nightmares. So whether it's the future, the unknown, or our flaws, we, we, we have to look the monster in the eye. And hold that son of a bitch's gaze. It's hard, I know. We want to blink when we try that. But don't, don't blink. Because I'm telling you, if you hold its gaze, it's going to bow and it's going to heed. It will become mortal. And then it becomes manageable. And that's when... We get the constructive capacity to navigate past and through whatever it is that's keeping us up at night. Now, if we don't look it in the eye, uh-oh. That son of a bitch starts growing like a shadow on the wall. As we reseed, it proceeds. Anything worth having or gaining in our lives has to cost us something. The cost of facing our fears is not free. It's hard. We're supposed to be sweating in our boots. <laughs> fears, flaws, we all have them. The future, the unknown, it's scary. But we have to understand that we can have, we can have fears and flaws and still get to our ideal life. I'd say that actually, the, the fears and the flaws are an inherent part 
of the initiation of getting there. They're the rites of passage to get where we want to go. And I'd say there's no getting there without them. So, first off, let's admit that we all have fears and flaws, right? They're there. They need to be. Second, let's admit that to get to where we want to go, we got to face them. I, I found this excerpt in, in my journals when I was working on this section of the event, and it made me smile. Let me, let me read it to you. <laughs> Oh, shit. Said, uh, what's the boogeyman? <clears throat> to look the boogeyman in the eye and laugh at him. To dare ourselves to be inconsiderate and not ask for permission. Sometimes we got to listen to that little whisper inside us that only we can hear and chase that fucking dream down. Just so we can find out. It's a fun one, right? So what's been holding you hostage? What's the a boogeyman under your bed that you've been too afraid to find out ain't as scary as you thought he was? What monster do you need to look in the eye? Admit it. And if you dare... Put in chat. What do we got? Oh. Alcohol. talk about this next topic number nine everybody hear me okay out there okay number nine is a beautiful one it's called gratitude what we are thankful for so i got a question for you and for me do you dissect your success more or do you dissect your failures more? Me, I dissect my failures more than my successes. Damn it. Most of us probably do, I'm guessing. Anybody out there going through a midlife crisis? 
Carissa told me this morning there's even something going around called a quarter life crisis right now. Yeah. Anybody going through one of those? <whistles> me too. Congratulations to us. We're not settling. <laughs> but we got to ask ourselves, are we seeking and moving forward towards a more meaningful chapter in our lives? Or are we just running from our past? A past that maybe we regret and feel guilty about or consider a failure. Now, I, I propose that most of these crises, most of these midlife crises and quarter-life crises are not because we did not do all we could have done or because we failed in our past. Rather that most of these midlife crises are because we don't realize truly how much we actually did. We don't respect and show ourselves enough gratitude for the successes of our past. Now look, we all need something to push off of and away from to get to where we're going. But we got to watch we don't wallow in our failures too much, you know. We got to watch that we don't dissect our failures for too long. Because we do that, we, we become victimized by them. We start giving them too much credit. We find ourselves not only stopped at the red light, we find ourselves stuck at the damn red light. So I want you to admit a failure that you've made, that you're obsessing over. Can you say enough with the dissection of that failure and instead maybe forgive yourself? Let it go. Release the guilt. Turn the page. Move on. Change. And give grace her time of day. <laughs> now, admit a success that you've had or something that you do pretty darn well on a consistent basis. Something you're good at, you know, at work. A, a way you care for your child or sibling or your spouse. Maybe you have great timing for telling jokes. Maybe you're a great whistler. <laughs> Whatever that something is, I want you to give more credit to it. Give more respect to it. Have more gratitude for it. Now, will you commit to dissecting the successes instead of the failures in your life? I believe that the recipe for your particular secret sauce is, is under the hood of what you do well, not what you don't. So will you dig deeper into the why of your successes? Show yourself more gratitude for them? You do that, you're going to start to have more success more often, I bet you. See, gratitude, it reciprocates. When we are thankful for something, it has more meaning to us. When something has more meaning to us, we, we care for, nurture, tend, and feed it more. We take more responsibility for it. And when we do that, it grows, spreads, scales, multiplies. We do it more often, and it happens more often. And therefore, that makes us even more generous. So start dissecting your successes more than your failures. And start being great at what you're good at instead of trying to be good at what you're bad at. What are you good at? What are you successful at? Admit it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Number 10. Oh, that's a beautiful one. One of my good friends. Highest value. Big Dolphin, I know you're out there. Number 10, trust. In 1999, I had just had a dream that I was floating down a river, naked, wrapped up in anacondas, sharks, piranhas, and crocodiles. And lined along the ridge of the river, there were thousands of African tribesmen, each holding a shield and a spear. And it wasn't a nightmare. Actually, it was a wet dream. No shit. And it wasn't the first time that I'd had this dream. I know, doesn't make sense. But, and because it was... the first time that I had the element but what was the dream telling me and just where was I supposed to chase to well the only point of origin in the dream was the continent of Africa via the African tribesmen well Africa's a big continent a couple nights later I'm sitting in my hotel room still trying to figure out a clue to help me chase the meaning of this dream down and I was listening to my favorite musician Ali Farkature when one of my favorite songs of his came on, it's called I Do, A-I-D-U. Now, this had long been one of my favorite love songs, but I never really knew the exact meaning of it because the lyrics were in the African language of Bambara, of which I didn't understand. Now, I'd always thought that it was a romantic love song about a man and a woman, a couple in love. And for whatever reason, on this night there in the hotel listening to him, I got curious find out what that love song was about. So I got up and I grabbed the CD case and looked at the liner notes. This is what they read. This love song. This love song. <laughs> read the liner notes. Read this. Trust. Trust and faith in your fellow man has no equal. If you have experienced trust, you will know its strength. You must know yourself before you know others. It was a love song. Just not the one that I thought it was. It was a love song about trust. It was a love song about the great power of having faith in our fellow man. A love song about community, fellowship, about our need to know, have faith in, and trust ourselves. To be able to know, have faith in, and trust others. Well, that's when I thought, well, where's Ali from? I looked it up, Neofunke Mali. I said, well, that's where I'm going to go. Trust that. Two days later, I was on a flight to Mali, Africa to find Ali. I did find Ali on that trip and many other truths that I, to this day, trust in. I get it. It's hard to trust. We all seem to be in a constant battle with each other, with ourselves. Every day, we're in a cultural, ideological, philosophical battle with the world around us. Every day... We're in a physical, mental, and spiritual battle with ourselves. There are vibrations of trust. And those vibrations either separate us or they bring us together. The more we give, the more we get. David Schultz says, trust is the coin of the realm. When it is in the room, great things happen. When it's not, they don't. Look, I think we can all admit that today the vibration of our lack of trust, it is separating us. There is not much trust in the room. And we are suffering from the fact. You know, a study came out last year that less than 30% of people 
trust their own neighbors. Oh, jeez. That's gross. In our low trust society, we're anxious. We're, we're, we're looking for a tribe. We're, we're cynical. We can't extend our hand to others because we've forgotten how to extend our hand to ourselves. We got to shake hands again. First with ourselves, then with each other. It's the only way to build both of us up. Now, look, I'm not asking us to, to blindly trust anybody and everyone all the time. No, that would be foolish and unwise. I get it. Hell, it's a risk getting out of bed in the morning. But I am asking you, and I'm asking me, to stop leading with distrust, to stop making a lack of trust our default feeling on high. If we distrust ourselves, if we distrust ourselves and our own intuitions, we start missing out on a lot in our life. But when you trust others, when you give them a chance to heal, We're also healing ourselves. I don't believe we're ever going to truly move having more trust. Trust that we can all have the courage to give more than we do right now. So I got a proposal. How about this? How about we agree and admit to having a 5% more trust coalition? <laughs> Yes, 5%. And look, and I know there's some tyrants out there sitting there listening going, oh, perfect. I can't wait to take advantage of all these trust suckers. And, and, and to that I say, you know what? Yes, yes, if we trust more, we are going to get burned a time or two more. But the times that you get burned are going to pale in comparison to the strength, support, victories, and successes that you are going to get if you do trust more. You can measure mistrust in ounces, but you can measure trust in pounds. 5% more trust. 5%. Can we start there? See where it takes us? Trusting others 5% more? Being 5% more trustworthy? It's going to lead to trust in yourself a whole lot more. So... Let's first admit how little we do trust others. Now, let's admit how little we trust ourselves. Can you admit that you do have the courage to trust 5% more than you do? Admit it. Admit it. Oh. Trust in each other. My intuition, trusting my God. Okay. Those are coming in. I'm not going to get to all of them right now. They're there. I want to just admit something with you and have you admit this. Doesn't it feel pretty good to come clean? You know, look, we bury all this shit in the corner of our yard, all that stuff we didn't want in our house, the stuff we put on the porch and then ran out of space, so we put it in the shed. And then when the shed got full, we put it in the back corner of the yard, you know, so we wouldn't have to deal with it. But now all those piles of shit we put in the corner of our yard, it's starting to encroach on us, you know? That pile keeps growing until it smothers the shed. Then it gets on our porch. Then it's in our living room. Then it's in our kitchen. And before we know it, we are stepping over shit just to get in bed. Yeah. We're running out of real estate. And soon enough, oh shit, there's shit on the pillow. So we flip the pillow over. Oh shit, there's, there's shit on the other 
inside a pillow. We gotta come clean, folks. Let's admit what we've been hiding. What's that thing that started to smell, started small, that we just innocently put in the closet of our conscience, that now is starting to creep, starting to creep, like the weeds that are now starting to trespass on our day-to-day -day real estate. What's that shit that now might just be under our pillow? Let's admit it. All right. So I've asked you to admit a whole lot of things today. Thank you for playing along and interrogating yourself. Thank you for not judging yourself and just good old admitting. And hell, if anything, can we all just have a good old giggle at ourselves for being human? Remember, guilty and approved at the outset. I think we've all earned a heartfelt laugh at the fact that we may not be as evolved as a species as we like to think we are. <laughs> Sorry, but we gotta admit it. Uh, like, like I said, if we wanna start living, we gotta start admitting. If we wanna be legit, we gotta admit. Guilty twice. I rhymed for the second time. Now, thank y'all for that. I met our first guest recently on a podcast and we had a lot in common right away uh, she is willing to admit to truth about herself about life successes and failures she has faced and made many a boogeyman bow down never one to be complacent she is committed to making the hard choices that do bring more balance more joy, more love to her life and the lives of those around her. That's cool. Today, she's gonna share a game-changing philosophy on finding and committing to living more of your best life, being more of your best you, by making one simple change in how you think. You can only do what you do when you're clear about what you don't. Marie Forleo. Marie Forleo is a leader in a whole new generation of super solars. Millions of young women look to Marie as their inspiration. She's one of the top life coaches on the planet. An internationally recognized, award-winning entrepreneur. She wrote the New York Times number one bestseller. Everything is figure out of it. Star of the award-winning show, Marie TV. She's the founder of the highly acclaimed business training school, B School. She's an extraordinary woman. She's a Jersey girl. She inspires millions of people around the world. She's socially conscious global empire. She's really all about giving back and changing the world. Please welcome Marie Forleo. become a victim of your own success. Like, you worked so hard to achieve something or become something or build something, and then it finally happened, right? You got that relationship, you got that career, you got that business, you got that family. And then all of a sudden, you hit a wall. Either you ran out of gas, right? You got exhausted. Or maybe you got stressed. Or you lost your passion. Or you got bored. Or maybe, maybe, your soul started nudging you from the inside and saying, hey, you know this thing that you wanted for so long, this thing that you worked so hard for? 
Actually, you're meant to go in a whole different direction. And then in that transition, right, in that realization, you started feeling totally lost, unsure of yourself. And you started wondering, like, how the heck do I figure out where to go from here? Anyone ever felt that? If you felt that, I want to let you know you are not alone. Now, look, if you also identify as a creative, right, as a dreamer, as a go-getter, if you're that person that people always come to for ideas and for support, if you're that, that invisible strength and that stability that other people rely on, and right now, if you know in your heart that there's, there's a bigger future for you, if you know that you are meant for more, I got to tell you, this is especially important, what we're going to dig into right now, because sometimes it's just harder for people like us. So what we're going to peel into is really that first and most critical step on the path to more, right? So as Matthew was just talking about, it's about having that courage to admit to yourself what is not working in your life. It's having the bravery to recognize that, you know what, maybe it's time to, to slow down, to, to hit pause, maybe even come to a full stop, so that we can face a truth that either consciously or unconsciously, man, you've been blowing past some warning signals for a while. And maybe that's the very reason that you're here today. Now, here's something that I've learned about admitting the truth to yourself about yourself. So look, it is rarely easy. It's often kind of uncomfortable, right? Most of the time, it is massively friggin' inconvenient, but here's the deal. It always, always sets us free. Now, look, I don't know about you, but freedom, right? That is my number one highest value in life. And I have a suspicion that since you're here at this beautiful event called the Art of Living, that freedom is probably one of your top values, too. And look, I mean... We all want more freedom, right? We want the freedom to experience more joy and more connection and more love. At least I do. We want the freedom to create more abundance, right? More free time and, of course, more impact. And ultimately, I think we all want the freedom to live into what we feel is our highest potential. But here's what's so super cool and really unexpected. So sometimes roadblocks actually play this critical and very positive role on our path to more. Because as McConaughey was talking about, admitting that we need a full-on red light, that can actually be the first step in catching our next level green. So here's what that looked like for me. It was a few years back, but I remember it like it was yesterday. So I walked downstairs in the middle of the afternoon in my house, and I saw it. It was calling to me, and it took everything I had to resist it. It was my couch. I wanted to lie down on that thing so bad because I was so friggin' exhausted. And then I heard that voice in my head, right? That voice in my head that said, you can't take a break. There's no breaks for you. You've got another interview coming up in two hours. You've got to go to the store. You've got to get groceries for dinner. Kuma, he needs his medication, and he needs to be taken to the vet today. You've got about 100 emails. You've got 12 texts. You've got those design approvals. And oh, yeah, you know what? You promised you call your parents. So no, no five-minute break for you. And then I remember not giving myself permission, right, to put my head down and rest, even just for five minutes. Because the truth is, I thought resting would mean that I was lazy, I was unproductive, I was not ambitious enough. And if I need to rest on the couch in the middle of the day, even for a few minutes, you wanna know what that really means? It means that deep down, I don't have what it takes to be as successful or as accomplished as I wanna be. I must not be made of the right stuff. I must be weak. So what did I do? I did what I always do. I pushed myself to keep going, right? I got another cup of coffee. I marched back upstairs and I kept on working. Because pushing and pushing myself and punishing and punishing myself, that's got to be the secret to success, right? I mean, I've been doing it my whole life. Look how far it's gotten me. I can't stop now. And like so many of you, 
I got all kinds of people depending on me. It's all on my shoulders. And if I stop or slow down even for a minute, everything I worked so hard for my whole life is probably going to fall apart. Now look, I wish, honestly, that I could tell you that that was an isolated incident. It was not. It was as though no matter how hard I worked, no matter how many hours I put in, I felt like it was never enough to the point where, and this was so scary, I actually started waking up. And one of the very first thoughts I had when my eyes opened in the morning was a version of this. I can't do this anymore. I want to run away from my life. I wish I could just disappear for a while and not exist. And look, I'm going to be honest. I was doing all the things that we all know that we should do, right? So I was eating pretty healthy and clean. I was meditating. I was journaling, praying, working out, getting enough sleep, you name it. And as somebody who has an ADHD brain, those things, man, they're usually lifesavers for me. But none of that was working. You want to know why? Because I had to admit that I felt complete. I had to admit that I was feeling such a deep level of anxiety and depression that I had never experienced before. And I had to admit that I had so much shame around that. So yeah, I mean, I knew I had a problem, but the truth was I was so addicted to engineering green lights that yellows and reds, not an option for me. Now, to be clear, all that constant pushing and pushing, right? And that punishing and punishing, I mean, it definitely produced results. Just not all of them was what I was aiming for. You see, I started having all of these unusual pains in my body. I learned that my adrenals shot. Like literally, a doctor said to me, based on my lab work, she said, Marie, it's a miracle you're able to get up every day. Then, we discovered I actually had all these tumors growing inside of me, including one the size of a grapefruit growing outside of my uterus, pushing all of my other organs out of place. Ultimately, I had to have an urgent hysterectomy to make the pain stop to get those tumors out. You see, life gave me a big old red light because I was unwilling to give it to myself. I believe what most of us don't realize is that sometimes, sometimes getting on the path to more, it actually requires doing less. It requires eliminating, letting go, saying no of some of the thought patterns, the behavior patterns, the emotional patterns that if we're being super honest, like really honest, that we've grown to rely on. Because look, we gotta be real, right? Most of us, I at least know I have, we've developed some patterns that may have been useful at some point in our lives. They either helped us thrive or they helped us survive. But now, the game is that we need to admit that they've become destructive, right? We need to admit that some of our old ways right now are causing us more harm than good. And look, I believe that our souls know the truth. Our souls know that what got us here is not going to get us there. So what I want to share now, this is something I'm so excited about. This is a simple science-backed trick that helped me eliminate probably one of the most destructive patterns that I had. Right? It was this hidden addiction that was preventing me from getting to my next level of more. And I promise you this. So I've taught this now to tens of thousands of people. And what you're about to learn, it's... It's so simple, it works like magic, and I promise you, like pinky swear, it's gonna help you eliminate any emotional or behavioral or thought pattern that's holding you back. Cool? Are you guys into this? Yes? So all it requires really is an open mind, an open heart, and this willingness to just look at yourself with curiosity and compassion. And here's how that unfolded for me. So my partner, Josh, I love him so much. We've been together for like 20 years. He would often ask me at the end of the day, he would be like, hey, babe, how was your day, right? How's it going? How's it going at work? And I pretty much answer with some version of the same thing. I'd be like, oh, work is so over. 
overwhelming right now. There's just, there's so much on my plate. I've got this big Marie TV shoot coming up and, and we got to hire more programmers again. And I've got to create all this content on deadline. If I could just get through the next few months, then I'll finally be able to breathe. Anyone ever tell yourself that one before? You see, that was a lie that I told myself and I believed it. But the truth was that that overwhelmed feeling, right? It never ended because I kept reinforcing the mental and emotional program called, I'm always overwhelmed. I mean, without even realizing it. It was like I was a fish in water. My internal and my external self-talk was drenched in overwhelm, overwhelm, overwhelm. Until one day, this was a very special day, I had this, this awakening in my kitchen. It was one of those weird like out of body experiences where I somehow witnessed myself talking about how friggin overwhelmed I was and I finally saw how repetitive and ridiculous this pattern had become I was like whoa wait a minute Marie Forleo what are you saying right now like do you hear yourself are you listening to yourself this is the same sad I'm so overwhelmed song for years this is like this is super stressful this is no way to live. Like, are you finally ready, girl, to let this thing go? And in an instant, I kid you not, this magical little phrase appeared in my mental theater, right? Like, I didn't think it up. I didn't try and create it. It was a mantra that flashed in my mind, and I feel like it was a gift from the divine or from my higher self. Here it was. You ready for it? I don't do overwhelm. I don't do overwhelm. The second I heard those words, I don't do overwhelm. I got to tell you, my shoulders relaxed. I felt this like 400 pound weight lifted off of me. It was as if a portal opened up and I was shown this whole other possibility for how to live my life. And from that instant on, I don't do overwhelm. That actually became a part of my new internal programming, right? That became my new mantra, my new affirmation. I kept saying it out loud and in my head. I was like, I don't do overwhelm. I don't do overwhelm. You know what? I actually, I don't do overwhelm. I don't touch this stuff. Now, after a few months of saying this, like over and over again, right? With conscious intention, overwhelm actually started to become foreign to me. It was as if someone asked me like, hey, Marie, you know what? I want you to go murder your neighbor. I'd be like, no, what are you freaking bonker pants? I don't do murder. That is not a thing I do. You see, just by repeatedly using this very simple mantra, I don't do overwhelm, I actually began to change my own brain, which did what? It changed my beliefs, which helped me change my behavior and set a whole new standard for myself. So here's what that looked like. All of a sudden, I stopped saying yes to opportunities unless they were truly like a full body yes. I stopped overstuffing my calendar with random projects and meetings and coffee dates and obligations that I knew I would later regret. I even stopped opening my inbox during the middle of the day when clearly that was not the best and highest use of my time. And I kid you not, once I drew that line in the sand, right? Once I built a new set of neural networks in this brain, overwhelm was not a zip code I was willing to live in anymore. And now here's what's even more interesting about the statement, I don't do overwhelm. So check this out. It actually leverages an extremely powerful linguistic tool that hardly anybody knows about. In fact, it's empirically proven to be up to eight times more effective than other language choices when it comes to up-leveling our own behavior. So all of this is based on research done by Dr. Vanessa Patrick. So she found that when people frame a refusal as in, I don't, so for instance, like, I don't drink sugary sodas, right? Instead of I can't, they were actually way more successful at resisting temptation. In fact, when it came to deciding whether or not to eat certain foods, right? Saying I don't was nearly three times as effective as saying no, and check this out, eight times more effective than saying I can't. So now you might be wondering, okay, Marie, this is interesting, why is that? Well, part of the reason is this. When we say I don't, 
we experience that as like a choice that we're making, right? So we feel strong. We feel empowered. This is an expression of our identity. We're expressing our standards. But the moment we say, I can't, check it out. What happens? What happens in your body? Instantly, we start to feel restricted, right? We make ourselves feel weak and like a victim, like, like we're being controlled by some external authority or some external circumstance. Now look, your pattern, it might have nothing at all to do with overwhelm, right? So I shared this with a friend of mine and she said, you know what, Marie, this is fascinating. Overwhelm isn't my thing, but you know what is? Guilt. Oh my God, I'm always feeling so guilty that I should be spending more time with my kid. Even though in reality, I do spend a ton of time with her, but this guilt thing, oh my God, it's making me miserable and it's making me exhausted. And I said, great. So we're gonna do an experiment. I want you to play with, I don't do guilt right? Make that your new mantra. I want you to try it on for a few weeks, just like a new dress. Let me know how it goes. You want to know something? Totally changed her life. So for you, might not be overwhelmed, might not be guilt, but I bet it's something, right? Take a look. This is such a cool opportunity to be honest with yourself. Tell the truth. So for you, what is it? Is it procrastination? Is it perfectionism? Is it looking at your phone first thing when you wake up? I don't know what it is, but you do, right? So what is it? What is that little emotional pattern? What is that thought pattern? What is that behavior pattern that's getting in your way of more? And why not, for the love of all things holy, right? Why not give yourself this beautiful eight times advantage with this simple sentence stem? I don't do blank. Like why not quickly and efficiently eliminate that pattern from your life forever? So I want you to think about it this way. Your brain is a supercomputer that follows the directions that you program it with. The brain simply believes whatever you tell it most. That's why what you say to yourself in the privacy of your beautiful mind, it matters. This isn't science fiction, right? This is science fact. This is called neuroplasticity. It's something known as Hebb's law. So neurons that fire together, wire together. And whether you realize it or not, your self-talk, right? What you say to yourself consistently and repeatedly, man, that shapes your beautiful brain, which shapes your beliefs, which impacts your thoughts and your feelings and your behaviors, which guess what? It creates your reality. So I want you to remember this, write it down. The brain simply believes whatever you tell it most. And that means whatever you tell it most about you and your experience of this life, it will create. It has no choice. But guess what? You have a choice, meaning you as the conscious creator of your life, you as the artist creating the masterpiece of this beautiful existence, you as the divine being, you always got a choice. So why not right now choose to admit just one little tiny pattern, one little habit that might be holding you back? What's that one little pattern that you're willing to eliminate, to let go of, to stop indulging in so that you can get on your path to more? What is your I don't do blank statement? I want you to put it in the chat right now. Don't overthink, just go. What do I see here? I don't do that trip. I don't, yes, I don't do negative self-talk. I don't do stressed out. I don't do guilt. Yes. I don't do rejection. I don't do controlling. I don't do overthinking. You guys are crushing it right now. Yes. I don't do laziness. I don't do shots. Yes. I don't do self-doubt. Beautiful. Keep going. So here's the thing. You always want to name your thing. You want to know your thing. You got a thing because we all got a thing, right? Tell the truth, come and clean about it. And I want you to have fun with this whole process. Please do that for me. You wanna know why? Because when you have fun with this process, when you admit, when you tell the truth, you will set yourself free. And more importantly, letting this thing go, whatever that thing is, it's gonna create so much space for you to get to your more, more of what you really want in this next season of your life whether that's more abundance, that's more health, that's more energy, whatever it is. And look, here's something I know. You came here for a reason, right? You're taking your time out from your day for a reason. 
one of which is probably because there's something about the way that Mr. Matthew McConaughey lives and teaches that inspires you, right? It's one of the reasons that I'm here too. I, I love the way he thinks. I really respect and appreciate the creative and playful nature that he brings to this work. It makes the journey super fun. But the truth is, we're just at the beginning of this together and there is so much more for us to do. So I'm actually curious, who here is excited to keep this journey going? Who here is not only loving the chance to get to learn more from Matthew, but also loving the chance, right, to unpack your own personal path to more? Type yes in the chat if you're pumped to keep going. Keep it, yes, all right, this is what I'm talking about. Fire it up, come on now. Beautiful. Here's something else I know for sure. Probably one of the biggest reasons that you're here today is because deep down, your soul knows there is so much more that's possible for you. I don't care what happened in your past or what challenges you're facing right now. Guess what? There is so much more for you to create. There is so much more for you to experience. There's so much more for you to give. And I promise you this, it is not too late for you. You have not missed your chance. You know, something that I say on my show, Marie TV, I always say, stay on your game and keep going for your big dreams because the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. And I know that to be true to my core because here's something I know. My more is helping you find yours. It's helping you create whatever it is that's gonna matter most to you at this next stage and season of your life, whether that's more joy or more time or more energy or more prosperity or more love. And ultimately, I think it's gonna come down to more freedom because at the end of the day, isn't that what we're all looking for? I wanna thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I am sending you so much love. And what my soul knows for sure is that you deserve your more. Thank you, everyone. Nice to have Marie here. And I gotta tell you, so uh, McConaughey's coming back out, so I hope nobody's leaving, not even for a second. And I can tell you, and being in the back here, he's helped create such a casual vibe that's going on here. I have to, you know, we got 2.4 million people registered from this event, and it is 150 countries around the world. And you would think, and it's such a cool vibe. And when Matthew came off, I have to tell you, I could see, I could see the excitement in his face because of your chat. I, I watched it happen. Who in here watched it when he started reading the chats? You could see him leaning in, having more fun, right? I see a Susan and Daniel and Juan and Linda and Lene, right? I watched it too, and it's pretty amazing. Now, I, I got a couple things to share here today, uh, and then we're going to bring Matthew back out. But in the meantime, um, I want to share... A, in this shifting time, we have to agree, I said it earlier, I, I don't want to beat it up, but this is a shifting time. This is where, when we have things that are bugging us, it's like there's a magnifying glass on it. And, and sometimes we feel stuck. Sometimes we're doing okay, we want to go to the next level. Sometimes we just got to get back in the game. Sometimes we want to reinvent, reconnect, start over. Or as Matthew Sun said, just meet new people and do cool things. And for some reason, we're, we're holding back. But I want to give you a little kudos today. Just by being you being here, you're ahead of most. Because most people complain about things going wrong. Most people are upset about what's happening in the world and they get sucked into one way or another and they're not doing something. You guys are taking the time to be here today. So celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself being here. You are taking the uncomfortable action it takes to move forward. And not everything we share, not everything I share is going to be perfect or Marie or Trent or Tony or even Matthew. But if there's one thing, if there's a couple of things that allow you to go, oh, I can make a difference, then, then we did our job here today. And I like to simplify. We're here to learn the art of living, right? What I'd love for you to think about, I, I love simple terms. I heard something about five years ago called own your future, to own your future. Somebody said the phrase, in fact, Tony Robbins and I did an event based around it. It was one of our biggest events. 
And I love that thought, because I like simple ways for analogy, is if I don't own my future, who will? And, and then I start thinking about, you know, if, if I don't own my choices, if I don't own my calendar, if I don't own my love, if I don't own my decisions, if I don't own my freedom, put it in the chat. What do you want to own? Me, one of my big ones is owning my calendar, owning my time for my family and the things I want to do. So I started thinking about that. And then if you go deeper, like I said earlier, we all have our stuff, right? I see in the chat what you own. For me, it's personal. And we all got that thing. And we could use it as fuel. In my life, I watched my mom and dad. When I was three, my parents split. And I watched them go in different directions. Both worked really hard. My mom worked three jobs to make about 90 bucks a week to help support us. We lived in a trailer park for a while. I lived with my dad. He worked his tail off in a collision shop. And sometimes we didn't have, I didn't have lunch money when I went to school. Now, we all got our thing. But I realized my parents didn't own their future. They didn't own their decisions. And that, that kind of builds up, right? And can build resentment, unhappiness, all those things. So it made me at a young age say, hell no. I need to do something different. I need to gain new skills, new capabilities. I love my parents more than anything. But I wanted something different. Who feels that same way? You want something different, unique. You want to make your own decisions. My heart, my life, my inspiration, my motivation, my future, right? And again, remember that in times like these, there's kind of a magnifying glass. So what I want to share with you today, and I'm going to do it in about 15 minutes, so be ready, get your pens out, is I want to share three C's and a bonus P. I know it might sound silly, but the three C's that have really made a big impact in my life. And the first one is change. Write that down, change. Change is one of those things we kind of get excited about when we first hear it, but why does it paralyze so many people and they stop? You ever hear, if I'm not climbing, I'm sliding. If I'm not changing, I'm dying, right? It's like change is so important, but when we get to that edge, when we get right to going into that new relationship or starting over or starting the business or saying I do or saying I don't or I freaking can't, right in that moment, we get a little stuck. So, so think about if you ever heard of or read that book, Who Moved My Cheese? Right? It's a great book. It's a short little read. But the concept is there's two little people and two little mice in a maze. And they find this big pile of cheese in the maze, and they kind of get entitled. The cheese just keeps coming. They don't have to do anything. They name the cheese. They name the area. They become the governor of the cheese. One day the cheese stops coming. Day two, day five, day ten, cheese just stops coming. Finally, the mice are like, I think we got to go find another cheese. And the little people are like, no, hell no, they're going to bring my cheese back. I'm entitled to this cheese. It's coming back to me. And it doesn't. It's scary for the, the mice. They have to go change. They have to go down a maze. And you know what? It was hard. And they found dead ends. But eventually, they found a little more cheese. And they found way more cheese than they originally had because they made that change where the little people pretty much starved. How many of us sometimes had stuff going on, had a good relationship, someone moved the cheese and we're like, no, 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 I, I want that back to the way it was, but we're not taking the change we need to make a difference. How many of us had the last 10, 15 years, the economy's been like that, it's shifting a little. Change, we're like, no, 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 I want it to go back to the way it was. Sometimes we think a change direction. I made up this silly analogy when I was on stage once about a farmer. Every day, imagine if a farmer gets up every day and on the back of his tractor he stacks up the, the grain and he goes out a half a mile into the field to feed the cows. Now if he did that every day for years, eventually that tractor would build ruts. Kind of get on uh, cruise control. You could start the tractor, put it on the back and just let go of the wheel. Sometimes we've let go of the wheel of our own lives. Kind of get in the hypnotic rhythm of life, good or bad. We just do the same thing over. But let me ask you something. Could you change your whole life with a half an inch? Where it's little progress in time. We got Tony Robbins coming up here in a little while. He always says we all overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do with five. Let me ask you, if the farmer just one day got up, put the grain on the tractor, started it, and then just turned the wheel a half an inch. On the first 100 feet, you'd see no difference. 300 feet, that tractor starts going and it bounces out of the ruts. 
500 feet, 600 feet, you get a half a mile, you can't even recognize where you were. You made subtle little shifts of changes towards the person you are meant to be. We all agree that we're meant for more. If we're meant for more, we got to do something different today than we did yesterday. And though we think we are, so many times we have the dreams and the desires, but we don't take the uncomfortable action. But I'm telling you, it could start with a half inch. That's number one. Second C, write this down. Courage. Courage. Ah, courage. Courage is moving forward even when you're scared. It's not the absence of being scared or fear. It's moving forward. It's being bold. It's being brave. It's jumping out of the plane and hoping you grow wings on the way down. Ooh, courage. So how do you find the courage to move forward? See, I'm going to give you a little secret. The third C is confidence. But you don't get to confidence unless you're courageous because you don't move without it. So I, I want to give you a little secret, at least something that's changed my life. Whenever you're about to move into that thing you want, that next level of life, next level job, income, whatever it is that you want, sometimes there's that belief that pops up, isn't there? Ah, you're too old, too young. It's a new world. Ah, too much technology. It's the economy. My spouse just doesn't believe. My other half doesn't believe in my dreams. My friends think I'm crazy. We don't realize that these, these little things come up, and in life they're cumulative when we start thinking about that, and all of a sudden you don't realize why you're not moving forward, but it's this story. Who can agree? Raise your hand if you've had a story, a belief, or something that's held you back in your life. Thank you, Tina, Carrie, Donna, Christian, Scott, right? So I want, I want you to do me a favor. Get, let's get... Let's get rowdy here in the chat, okay? I want you to rate that story, that belief, I'm not good enough. No one believes in me. Too old. I don't have the energy. I procrastinate. All the crap we've had in our lives. I want you to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 in the chat right now. I'm watching YouTube, watching uh, uh, on Zoom. Rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 how much that story has cost you in your life. Stopped you from moving forward. I could do it, but look at 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 8, a lot, 10, 10, 10. I get it. You shared a bunch of them when you were on with Matthew before, and I was reading them all. You're, I was in, you're in my heart, right? Look at the nines and tens every once in a while with seven. Okay. Now, that's kind of a fear we got to break through, right? We got to bust that. I, I like approaching it in a different way. That, let's park that. We had probably 8.7 or 9.2 average up there. Now, I want you to think of another fear. Imagine getting to the end of your life and your maker, whatever your beliefs are, plays you a video of the man or woman you could have been. Play a video and say, hey, this is when you were thinking you were told you weren't. You just need to be bold and move forward. This is where your life went. Or when you said, hey, enough with that relationship, or I must empower this relationship, or yes, I'm going to, or I'm committed to say no, I do, I don't, I can, I don't care what they think, I have enough, I am enough, I look amazing, I feel amazing, I'm going to do it. This is, this is where you would have been if you made that ch choice. Imagine seeing that video and what you would feel, what would, what would the thought be in your mind? Can I go back? I missed it. I, I need another shot. I don't care what my friends would think. I don't care what my ex would think. I don't care what people think. I know I wasn't too old. I was still a baby back then. Please let me go back. Think of that. Now do me a favor. Rate that on a 1 to 10 scale. The fear of getting to the end of your life and realize you never got in the game. You stayed up in the stands with someone else's name on your back instead of getting in the arena. Look at it. It's all tens. A thousand. A million. More zeros than I can look at. It's infinite. A million, a million, ten, I hate it, ten, ten times, ten times. So if we can make that feeling, hey, hey, what would be, put it in the chat. The first one seems like a two now, doesn't it, <laughs> right? First one's like, oh, I was, like, it's a two. But think about this. If your maker said to you, hey, you saw this, you got one wish, what would that wish be? What would that wish be? You wish it would be to go back to right now and start over. Look at the start now, to reload, to start again, to start again, to start over, leave over, restart. Guess what? Wish granted. Wish granted. We're here today. We can take uncomfortable action. We can move forward. We could be bold in this circumstance. We could be courageous and make subtle shifts towards the man or the woman you're supposed to be. 
Third C, confidence. Ah, you don't get the confidence until you start making changes and you make these little shifts and then you get stuck and you go, no, no, I'm going to be courageous. Borrow some courage from your past if you need to. And now it's time to be confident. Now, when I talk about confidence, this is where I get to show my brilliance, <laughs> kidding aside, is imagine this. Imagine when it comes to confidence, yes, you have to make change. Yes, you have, yes, you have to be courageous. You've got to be in the game. But what if confidence came by doing less of the things that take your confidence away? Hmm, my brilliance, right? Kidding aside, think about that. What in your life do you currently do that holds you back from being all of you? And remember, it's cumulative. I don't know. Let's think about the news. When is the last time anybody ever watched the news and felt really confident or really amazing when you were done? Think about it. Has anybody in the last three years watched the news and got done and went, oh, I am ready. Babe, you missed the 5 o'clock news. Watch it at 9. We got this, babe. No, you watch the news, you're like, son of a bitch, this is, it's over, right? So I'm not trying to oversimplify things, but if you watch the news and it dings your confidence a little and then you hesitate on being courageous, then you don't get confidence. What's another one? Put in the chat, what's another thing that robs your confidence? That's pretty obvious. Don't watch the news. Friends, my boss, right? Others. Think of, that's my second one. Is if you look at what robs your confidence, one of the number one things is bad advice. Usually bad free advice from friends or loved ones that have the best intentions, but it's your single friend telling you how to fix your marriage. It's your broke friend telling you how to get wealthy and start the new business or how to stop it. It's the wrong time. We are letting bad free advice come into our heads and all of a sudden we get confused. We get a little hesitant, a little less confident, and guess what? We stand still. We leave things the way they are. No one's coming to save us. I think we all can agree. That's why we're here today. Nobody's waving a magic wand. Last president, current president, next president. It's on us. So if it's on us, we gotta regain ourselves. We gotta regain that confidence. So the last one that I like, and there's plenty of them, you identify what robs your confidence. What I love is working on your weaknesses. Matthew said it earlier. Don't work on things you're bad at. Get really good at the things you're good at. It's in direct alignment with what he shared. I didn't even know he was going to share that today. So many of us are, we were told in school or told by a spouse or told by somebody in your life that things aren't working, and then we go, oh, I got to get good at reading. I still can't read well. I have dyslexia so bad. I got to listen to books. I listened to green lights. I didn't read green lights. So you got to stop letting the weaknesses in your life compound. Screw it. Let them go. You might never be good. Who cares? I suck at a lot of things. But I was really good at helping Matthew and Tony and this group getting... 2.4 million people here together. I still have dyslexia. I still can't read so good. Don't tell anybody. So pick out that part, because don't you have confidence when you work on something you love? Okay, here's the next level of brilliance. Figure out the things that build your confidence and do less of it. Figure the things that build your confidence do, and do more of it. Figure the things that build your confidence, do more of it. Like staying engaged in a group like this. Who feels more confident already today? We're only not even halfway through. Who feels more confident today? Right? Put it in the chat, your level of confidence today. Stay connected to a group like this. Let McConaughey fill your head all year long on ways to approach life in a different way. Get a new perspective. That's one of the things he's doing here today is getting you to look at a different lens because the lens you're looking at might be, not might be as clear as you think. Certain books, courses, podcasts, praying, gratitude, going to church. I'm not sure what builds your confidence, but if you have that meter, you go, oh, 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 that's taking it away. I'm nuking that. That makes me feel good. I'm going in that direction. So the third C is confidence. Now I said there'd be a bonus P. What the heck is that? That's persuasion, influence. Sometimes we call it sales. 
Now, I want you to really think about influence and persuasion. It gets a bad rap. That's just a true story. Persuasion, influence, we think of sales. Sometimes we think of it as icky. I want you to tell you something. You know what's icky? The people that do the wrong things when they influence. If you sell a really bad car to an elderly person and they don't know it, that's not sales. You're just a bad human. If you sell drugs to a drug addict, you're a bad human. But sales, if you really take sales, influence, persuasion, when you know it can help someone's life, when it's a good product, or you're selling yourself to your children, you're influencing yourself, you're influencing your children, influencing people you love, or offering something that can really make a difference in their life, then sales is love. Sales is service. Think about this. Who in here is glad that you were influenced to show up here today? Raise your hand or put it in the chat. McConaughey's watching your chat all. So who is, who is glad you're, if you read Green Lights, who's glad you were influenced to read Green Lights? So if we look through sales and influence in a different lens, then all of a sudden we realize it's love. Listen, I, I wasn't joking before. Matthew's worked his tail off. I mean, we got eight months working on this and what's next for you. I mean, we spent five days in a table around in the other room before a month ago we spent another four days this week gaining the skills fine-tuning every bit of messaging he's doing that out of love and it would be a disservice to him not to offer it to you is that true so in your life if you start falling in love with what you want to provide a spouse a friend your children in your new business in your career the people you work with you realize that influence is the one of the greatest gifts to go to your next level all change starts with influence, I, I got to give you a quick story. I'm going to bring McConaughey out here in just a few minutes. But I got to give you a quick story. My wife, uh, she's in the other room. When we first started dating, you know, in the beginning, we're both foodies. And uh, my wife's very successful hairstylist. She owns a couple salons and does, has done amazing for herself. And one day I said to her, you know, how do you feel about influence and persuasion? She's like, no, no, I, I'm not sure on that. She, got one of the, she was voted the top 10 hairstylists in Arizona for 8 out of 10 years. She makes more than 99.9% .9 of every hairstyle. So I was amazed at what she does. I knew she had to be good at influence and sales. So I waited one day and I said, hey, I'm dying. We're food, we were foodies. Both love food. And one day I said, hey, babe, I'm dying for spaghetti and meatballs. I'm Italian and I want, she's like, babe, oh my God, she's very animated. She's like, babe, we have to go to this Italian restaurant in northern air up you know up in scottsdale arizona it is amazing if you've ever had pasta that's al dente it's a little firm she's like the pasta's homemade and it's so firm and they must cook the sauce all day because it's not chunky it's smooth and thin makes they grate a little olive oil or a great little parmesan cheese over it, a little olive oil and they put meatballs if you're going to eat meat by the time she's done you know those little things in your mouth when you're like oh my god it's so good i just want to go right now so she gets done i go you're so full of crap She's like, what are you talking about? I said, you're the best salesperson I've ever met. She goes, no, 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 babe. I... Hear me out. She said, I just want you to experience it. Think about that. When you read a book, when you go to a movie, when you eat at a great restaurant, who in your life, you're like, oh my God, you got to read this book, Green Lights. You got to go to this movie. You got to go to this restaurant. You got to try this supplement. You're not doing it because you're trying to sell them. You're doing it through love and you want to empower them. So I'm just sharing with you today. When you look through the lens that sales is service, and if you have something that improves someone's life, you're actually doing a disservice if you don't get it in their hands. The last thing I want to say is we, we covered three C's and a P today. Remember, change can start with a half an inch. We have to embrace it. We have to love it. We have to feel it. Next is courage. Cur Courage is jumping out of the plane, growing wings on the way down. Courage can come from borrowing it from something you did in the past. Or it can come from realizing I'm not going to get to the end of my life. Knowing I played small. I'm here to give more, be more, do more. Who's meant for more? And lastly, once you know when you make those subtle changes and you have a little more courage... And you have the confidence to get in the game and empower yourself. To empower yourself with the things that, that bring your confidence up, not down. And then realize influence can be love. 
influence, persuasion could be getting someone to do something that changes their life. You put those ingredients, I think you are on your path to more. You guys feeling it today? All right. Who's ready for a little more Matthew McConaughey? I think I'm ready for it. I think we got to hear it in the chat. Are we ready for a little more Matthew McConaughey? Without further ado, Matthew McConaughey. start tending to that build my confidence more. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What robs your confidence? Anything? At this phase of your life? What robs it? I'll tell you this. I can tell you what. Uh, what comes up short is when I don't. I know the things that I need to do daily and weekly that I need to tend to that are most important to me. That when I do them for a week or two or three that all of a sudden I start to go, oh, I got that. Oh, I got that in space. Oh, I got a full tank of that. And I start to fade. And I quit tending to those things. I quit having got certain it. habits that feed that confidence. And all of a sudden I look up a couple weeks later and I'm like, well, I'm a little shaky right now that I know yeah. I needed to do to fill my tank. It makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I, and I love this relationship that we built. And I got to see behind the hood a little, you know, behind the curtain a little bit. And what I said earlier is I meant, and, and this is such a benefit for you. you you've had this opportunity to walk, look at 30 years of journaling and see what works, yeah. see what patterns, what habits. And, and it's always, in my opinion, it's always the little things. They say small hinges swing a big door. Yeah. And I just watched that spending as much time as we did. You got these little habits that add up. Yeah. So I got, I got a big question yeah, for yeah. you, though. People have known you for the amazing actor you are. I watched your Oscar wing speech. So, so killer. And you play amazing characters. Mm. This is different. This is you today. Vulnerable. You being you. They're not, they're not saying, I love that character. They're thanking right, you. Right, 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 right. So, so I guess the question is, uh, with all that you've done, and we're halfway through this day, we've got a lot more coming. How are you feeling? I'm feeling as alive as I've ever felt, I'm feeling a little more alive than uh, uh, I maybe even thought I was going to feel. Look, I make films. I'm playing someone else's character in a script that someone else wrote, directed by someone else, lensed through a camera by someone else, and edited by someone else. So it's like four or five filters before my expression gets to get to you in, your, in the theater. Even writing the book, it's still one filter. You have to look at the written word. This is filterless. That's what I mean by it's live and a live. To be there and to be here talking to each one of you individually, but over 2.4 million of you, that collective of individuals all here for the same purpose, and to get like responses back from you, questions, admittances, the, 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 the conversation, the live conversation. I did not know it was going to be this much of a buzz. And a damn good buzz it is. So I'm, 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 I'm having a great time. I don't really want it to end. We're not we got, close to ending, are we? No, we got plenty yeah, okay, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got plenty going. He's got an ending. I, I've just got to jump ahead here. You've got an ending prepared today. I'm just telling you, you do not want to miss the end. Probably a couple hours from now. That we were, re we were going through it yesterday. I'm like, you sure you want to do that? He's like, absolutely. <laughs> so be ready to be shocked. All right, second question I got for you. Um, you got a lot going on. Yeah. You got TV, something TV coming up. You got movies coming up. I get to see behind the curtain, like I said earlier. I know how important your relationship is with your wife. I love watching you two behind the scenes. It's even way better than you would think in the front. And your connection is inspiring. You, uh, the way you talk about your kids, the time you spend mm -hmm. with your kids. Man, you put a lot of time into this, a lot of work into this, and some great things that we get to share with you today are even more of what this guy's done over the last eight months crazy nights we've up to midnight going back and forth after midnight a few times yeah, yeah. what drove you to go deeper a few reasons um for to start off with I, I personally needed to um secondly after I put out green lights so many thousands of readers asked me to you know to say can you can you go deeper can you give us more can you come back with more process and then serendipitously and simultaneously you and tony give me a call 
I go, hey, I'm like, oh, you read my mail? I'm like, you read my mail? Let's do this. Um, secondly, look, I, I, I know that it, it serves all of us to get to know ourselves better. Um, I always like to say this. We're, we're, we're the only people, the only person in our bed is us, no matter who we're sleeping with, right? And if, and if, if you're not for you, <laughs> who the fuck is? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, I also, we talk about us as individuals, I believe that the new frontier, where we can go, it's not going to come from a policy or, or, or a mandate or from the outside. Um, it, it's going to come from a commitment and a, and, a, and a covenant between our ears, I think, first, and then between this lane that we have between our head and our heart that can sometimes have a lot of potholes. You know what I mean? Um, individually. And if enough of us do that, we align enough individuals that way, we're going to have some, some real revolution. Uh, and, and one that matters, you know, not just to ourselves, but everybody. And that excites the heck out of me. Um, and then thirdly, the particular times, you talked about it today, we've all talked these particular times, because moving goalposts, hey, hey. You know, it's confusing. We're uncertain. We lack trust. We lack connection. We lack in supply that which we most demand. Yeah. Belief and a roadmap. Whew. What better time to go deeper than right now with, with those two things and try and give them to you and you give them to us and let's, let's get this revolution going. Yeah, my God, so good. And speaking of that, Speaking of a roadmap, you know, we've been, we have been working eight months on this yep. part is this event to put 2.4 million people together. All these people, there's 125, ah, actually 300 people working on this event behind the scenes right now. It, it's an incredible operation. Y'all couldn't say <laughs> there's a lot going on and has been going on for eight months to get to this right now. Yeah. And those late nights, it was part for this, but it was partly to go more, mm. you know, it's that, that transform. I always looked at it as the book. Today, as amazing as today is, I hope you're inspired today. I hope this book inspired you. But inspiration only lasts a little bit. I learned that from Tony Robbins 25 years ago. Inspiration only lasts a little bit. We need transformation. You called it. The book was an approach. Yep. It was time for the process, what everybody was asking on you. Yep. So I'd love to share a little bit about what we've been working on as well as this for the last eight months because it's been a heavy lift. It has been a heavy lift. <laughs> and amazing. And worth the wait. I uh, sure hope. Um, yeah, so the, the word more keeps coming up, right? We've been talking about it. It's been in my verbiage, it's been in your verbiage. The word more has been around in our talks, and I think for good reason. Why? Because I think we can all agree that we all want and need more. So uh, we put a course together that starts defining even more in depth, that more for each of us. Um, you know, quantity is a more that so many people talk about, but if the quantity we reach for in life doesn't give us quality as well, aren't we using the wrong calculator? Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean, so how do, how, how do we become more ourselves? How do we get more values? How do we have more choice? How do we get more balance, how do we have more joy, more love? And if we do all those things, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> and ultimately, I believe, by unpopular demand, that all, if we do all these things, that would be yep. us being more selfish. Um, so we put this, this course together. It's called uh, Road Trip, the Highway to More. Uh, it has nine mile markers that go in depth on each one of those topics that are in chronological order. So when you do the course, you're going to come out the other side seeing the kind of the real change that you want in well, your life. I, I got I to gotta commend you. I got to share. And in a minute, I, want, I get the, the pleasure, the, the privilege of being the first one to let you know what this man has worked so mm. hard on. Before we, before we go to that, I, I just want to share watching your work ethic, your depth of caring. Who Put it in the chat. We're watching. Who's felt this man's heart today? The energy. He doesn't need to be here. He wants to be here. He doesn't need to go beyond. He's got a bunch of acting roles, and he could just go down that road. But he kind of got bit with the, the, 
the book and seeing the yeah. and 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 yeah. this kind of transformation that we need. I'll tell you, Tony and I have been doing this. I've been in this industry 27 years. Tony for over 45. Tony's got number one best-selling personal development course in ever personal power. I've got a couple of number one best-selling courses. But I'll tell you what you put together is going to change the game. It mm. truly is revolutionary. It's an evolution. Mm. Mm. And it's the opportunity for you to to go on a road trip with this guy. Let him ride shotgun. So if you don't mind, I'm going to let them know what we did. You're going to let them know? I'm going to let them know. I'm getting out of here. You let them know. <laughs> Appreciate it. Guys, Matthew's going to be back in a few minutes here, but I get the privilege, I get the honor to share with you what this man has worked on for eight months. Because we're right. Today, I hope, is inspirational. Don't leave. There's so much. Tony Robbins is coming. Trent Shelton is coming. Uh, Matthew's coming back with an ending that'll blow your mind. But when today's over, sometimes we fall back into the hypnotic rhythm of our lives, right? We go back to where we were, even though we want to go someplace else. And we thought of a way where you could have this man ride shotgun with you to build something immersive. Can't even call it a course. We're calling it an immersive learning. And this is what you get. Guys, could you pull this up? I'm so excited. I get the honor to share this with you because here's what I know. If you're going to get from where you are to where you want to go, you're probably going to need some help. Sometimes we get stuck. And at this phase, all this time with him, I think McConaughey is the perfect person to go along that ride with you. Can you pull this up, guys? It's Road Trip, the highway to more. Now, here's what we know is in life, we need immersion don't we need to immerse ourselves and said we need to discover immerse and change we also need repetition and momentum we got to keep it going forward we can't just go in today and hope tomorrow will change you go to the gym for a weekend and be in good shape for the rest of your life right and we also need community don't you love what matthew's son said about i don't know if you guys heard it when he was going off the camp he said dad i just want to do cool things or meet uh, do new things and meet cool people how cool is that that's what community and accountability is so we took all this in mind literally eight months there's no exaggeration eight months obsessive nights around the table to create something no one's ever done before there it is road trip immersive learning experience let me go through it real quick you get nine mile markers admit more Got a little bit of taste of admit today. Who who felt the admit in Matthew's first presentation like, shit, I got to admit. Well, that's just the first part of this course. You have video nonstop in each one of these mile markers. More you, how to find your identity, be closer to you, more value. How do you trust in your value so you give more value to receive more? Ah, more choice, get unstuck, more balance. Who needs a little more balance in their lives? More joy, more cool, more love, more selfish. This is one of the most amazing courses. I, literally, I, we don't call it a course. It's transcended. It's going to change the game. And here's the cool part. He also built a 64-page immersive workbook that goes along with the course. This thing is unbelievable. The team worked with McConaughey on this night and day for months. So you can create your path you can create your journey so you can lay out your road to more now here's the cool part a course like this again tony and i've been doing this forever 65 years between us this should be a thousand dollar course and it's not i'm just going to be transparent with you it's not mcconaughey literally wants every single person that wants to have him help ride shotgun be a part of this and see it, that everybody here has the opportunity to get this but let me tell you what else we did Next, you're going to have live, we just decided to do this a couple of days ago, for the next eight weeks or so, and the next, the course, the first training starts next week, we're going to get together as a family, do cool things together, and we're going to walk through each of the mile markers together to keep you on track. Because sometimes, who's ever bought something, a book, you're excited about it, bought a course, I love it, and then you let it sit on the shelf. Lainey, I see you do it, Lynette, and Liz, and Tracy, right? You're like, I love that book. But nothing happened. We're not going to let that happen. So for the next eight weeks in this studio, we'll be walking through, making sure that you stay on track to your more. So you're not left behind. So you're not just hoping. I've read thousands of comments in the Facebook group. Filled my heart. It allows me to come here and speak without scripts and stuff because I know my job here is to help impact lives. And this is the man that can. He articulates in a way I've never seen. He makes it interesting, makes it fun. 
but also challenges you. These courses are also challenging. This is not a, just a good watch. At the end of each one, he's going to make you do your homework and challenge you to change your life. So you get eight weeks walkthrough. Then you get this private community that will change the game for you because you're going to be connected to this group. The people that you saw on the screen, but I get to see hundreds of you in front of me. You're connected to something bigger than yourself. That's an amazing package. Course, workbook, live weekly, and part of something bigger. But Tony and I, we've been doing this for a long time. We had so much fun partnering and working with McConaughey that we wanted to create something so irresistible during this event that if you're thinking about it, you got to say yes. And this is only for this event. We decided to give you three months free of Mastermind. Now, that's a platform Tony and I created to have the immersion, have the repetition, have the accountability. And here's what we're going to do. You'll also get three monthly live trainings. Now, if you think about the weekly you're going to get, that's about the course. This is next level. These are deep dive. And I'll be live in May. In June, you'll have Marie Forleo back on how to have the big ask. Who'd like some more Marie Forleo? And here's the cool part. Just a couple days ago, Matthew McConaughey agreed to come back in July for a training to show you how he uses journaling to take his success to the next level. So you'll have live monthly trainings as well. This is how you immerse yourself. This is how you say, I I'm not settling for where my life was. I'm going to where I deserve to be, and I want to gain new skills, look through a new set of glasses, and take action. So you have live monthly trainings. Here's the cool part. You get four years of the past trainings. They're unbelievable. Okay, you have access to that. Next, as a part of Mastermind, this bonus we're given three months for free, you're going to get a new course every month. And it's already got 20 courses in it. Persuasion, creative storytelling, no limits, confidence. There are so many amazing mini courses. And here's how I want you to look at these. What Tony and I are giving you, the course is your main focus. You go through what McConaughey created. You fill out your interactive workbook. You show up for those eight-week training. Game changer. Look at what Tony and I are doing is like uh, Christmas presents. I want to know a little bit more about persuasion. Let me go grab this course. I want a little bit more about relationships. Let me go grab this course. We just want to give you that access to immerse yourself to make the shift. Who knows they have to make a shift? Raise your hand if you know you have to do something different. That you have to go all in, that you have to burn the boats, and that's why we did this. We'll also add another 50 meals through Feeding America. We're already over a million, so let's go to two million so we could do a little good for ourselves and some good for other people. And here's what you get you get road trip. It is immersive learning at its best. You get to have this guy ride shotgun with you for the next. Three months, three years, as long as you want. It's yours for life. Imagine going through a tough time and saying, I need more love. I'm going to go get McConaughey. I need more balance in my life. I'm going to go get more McConaughey. So I'd suggest you go through it right away, but have this as a library forever. You get live weekly walkthroughs, so make sure you stay on track. You get the community. Be a part of something bigger. And you get a live training every month. One of them will be with McConaughey. You get a new course monthly. Over 20, over 30 to choose from in the library. We'll donate 50 meals Honest and truly, this is real value at 3900 $3, bucks. And if today we dropped it to $997, I would say you guys should all run and get it right now. But here's the cool part. And only during our live, you can have Road Trip, the highway to more. For $397, go to jointheroadtrip.com. I'd write this down. Because it's today. This is event only opportunity with Tony R's bonuses, that price. And there's even a three pay. You can get started and have access to everything for $150 today. Guys, I feel so honored to be part of this, to watch what this man has put in. I can't wait for you to get this course in your hands. It is beyond that. And I am so stoked that you have access to it. So here's what we're going to do. We're only halfway through. Tony Robbins is fired up. We got Trent Shelton. If you don't know him, you're going to need to know him. And McConaughey's got an ending that'll blow your mind. Let's take a quick 10-minute break. Go get enrolled and then come back. Be the first one to say, McConaughey, I'm in. We got jointheroadtrip.com. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Because the times, they do be a-changing. And I say it's time for us to adapt and to evolve. I say it's time for us to take a road trip, a road trip that really does go somewhere, a road trip 
on a highway that gives us more. That's why I'm here. I hope that's why you're here. What do you say? I'm gonna take a little, little road trip to where you really wanna go? I do. Thanks for being here. Let's work this thing called life out a little bit, huh?